All right, guys, so thanks for watching. That's the end of my landscape series, uh, going over how we created the terrain and sort of filled it with detail in Project Pegasus. And uh, this last video is just gonna be sort of taking a look at uh, what we've accomplished and uh, also sort of talking about the last kinds of uh, visual flourishes and uh, kind of touches that uh, I've added to the, uh, to sort of really finalize the terrain there. So um, the first thing I'm sure you guys will notice is the sky box. So I'm no longer using the uh, default sky that uh, you have in Unreal. Um, I actually have just set up the ultra dynamic sky, uh, which is a plugin uh, you can get from the Unreal Marketplace. And it's, it is a paid plugin, um, but as a sort of starting point for how to have like really nice looking volumetric skies, uh, sort of that run well and look good, and there's really no better place to, to start. So um, this isn't a sponsored plug. Um, I just personally have used Ultra Dynamic Sky on lots of projects, and uh, definitely uh, would recommend giving it a go. Um, so you can play, you can sort of drag it in, modify the settings, and this is sort of a, a customized version that I've created where I've tried to make the clouds look a little bit wispier, and uh, I've made uh, a secondary sort of like. Uh, sort of more scattered cloud layer up there that's still volumetric. So um, really nice thing here is that it allows you to play with the time of day and sort of visualize, you know, what you've been working on uh, at sort of different, uh, in different different lighting conditions. And um, something rather strange has happened there. The whole world appears to be in shadow. Um, there, we go. there we go, that looks a little bit better. Although maybe still a little bit weird. Um, there we go. So uh, yeah, you can sort of play around with the settings. Uh, you can change things like the cloud coverage with the drag of a slider. So it really, really a nice way to uh, sort of visualize, uh, you know, something quickly, uh, create some nice sort of cinematic shots uh, and, uh, you know, just get, get a good starting point for the skies in your game. So uh, yeah, that's part number one. Uh, the secondly, second most obvious thing is that you can probably see that I am no longer, uh, there's no longer sort of an emptiness around the island here. I'm using uh, sort of uh, the water plugin that uh, Epic actually ships as a first party feature. So um, if you go to your uh, plugins, go to uh, edit plugins, you should be able to see that you get a water, water plugin here. So I've just turned that on uh, and then I've dragged in an a water body ocean into the world and that's what this is and uh, i've just customized the uh, the color and appearance of that somewhat and the really nice thing about the uh, the water body ocean is that it looks great obviously uh, with sort of actual uh, actual waves with height in them so that's that's nice um, and then you have a more also more, more optimized version of the water that renders up to the the horizon there with a seamless transition uh, when looking out from the center of your world so so that's pretty cool. Um, if I had more time, I'd probably uh, spend a bit more time along the beaches and trying to make sort of the sea foam interact in a nice way and actually make the beaches themselves look good. Um, but, uh, you know, we've got to call it the end of the day at some point, and uh, maybe this will be uh, some, some area for a focus in a future Pegasus uh, updates, if we're lucky. Um, so yeah, that's the water. And you can see that if we uh, actually just click on the ocean surface there and look at the details panel, um, you can see that we've got this water body component and then we've got this water material. And essentially, uh, to, make, to make this look less cartoony, because by default it looks quite cartoony, uh, all you need to do is you really don't need to modify a lot of parameters. You just go down to the, the absorption scatting settings here and uh, the scattering settings. And by tweaking these absorption, these two parameters, you can really make the, your, your water look a lot more realistic um, and less cartoony. Um, so that's what I did there. Uh, and on a similar note, um, if we grab that water body ocean again once more, I believe if we search for waves, yeah, Gertzner Waves Ocean, um, you can see there on the right, this is what it looks like by default, a lot, a lot more cartoony. Um, but inside of here, we can tweak things like the number of waves. We can change things like the amplitude of the waves. So you can play around there with, uh, with what your ocean uh, appears to look like. So uh, these two big elements, the sky and the water have now been taken care of. Uh, so so what's, what's left? Well, um, if I just have a quick little zoom in here, and have a look at these uh, cliffs. In fact, this is probably not the best angle, so I'll just uh, I'll just find somewhere where this is a little bit more apparent. Um, fly around a second, maybe over here, and uh, or maybe even up up here into the up here into the environment. There we go. That's a little bit better. Um, so you can now see that I am in actual fact uh, showing that the you know the terrain here now has really rich and detailed uh, displacement going on, uh, which is not uh, separate meshes. These, this is not separate meshes driving the, the sort of rough appearance of the terrain here. This is actually, um, instead of that, using displacement and tessellation 
So uh, if I go down to the, uh, the Nanite visualization and change it to triangles, you can see that I am actually now using Nanite for the terrain. Um, I'm not sure if it will show me the, uh, the, the density of the displaced tessellated geometry node. Uh, if I press Alt 2, it also doesn't really show us what's going on there, unfortunately. Um, but in actual fact, what's going on is that we're taking the landscape and we've made it a nanite landscape. So if I can show you how we do that, if we just go into the, uh, the details, into the world outliner, go click on landscape, and if I just search nanite, all I did was I clicked enable nanite, and then I hit build, dat build data. So that, that converts our landscape to a nanite terrain. And then that allows us to take advantage of the new Unreal 5.3 uh, tessellation feature. Um, so uh, with, with, with this nanite landscape enabled, the last thing you need to do, or the last thing I did, is I go to the, uh, the project config directory. Oops, is that where I went? Um, yes, config default engine.ini. So if we, if we load that up, you just need to go and add these two lines to your uh, to your uh, default engine.ini, allow tessellation and r.nanite.tessellation equals one. And you can restart Unreal. And provided your uh, material has been set up to support tessellation and displacement, then you're gonna get the benefit of this really lovely, rich and detailed uh, sort of displacement of the terrain. So um, inside of the Pegasus material, I just opened up the material. You can see that we actually have in the layer parameters a separate displacement control for each of these different layers. And if I crank that up, I can crank up the intensity of the displacement on the cliffs, or I can turn it off. And you can see if I turn it off, what a huge difference that makes. If I put it back on 0.3, yeah, what a huge difference the displacement makes and adds uh, tons of rich and beautiful detail to the terrain. So we can go and set that for the, for the macro textures and the detail textures independently. And that's it, really. Um, those are the last kind of tweaks I made. Um, I also made a few kind of modifications to the uh, to the material blending of all the layers, and um, and that's really that's really mostly it. Um, so I just want to thank thank you again for following along with this series. Um, I hope that you found it really useful and interesting following along with this tutorial series. And um, I just to let you know that if you want to learn more about how the material uh, was set up and made, there's a separate set of video tutorials that we'll be releasing on the Side Effects website soon that go over just how uh, we set up and think about creating the kind of landscape material that we used on Project Pegasus, albeit a, a slightly simpler rendition of that. Additionally, um, we'll be releasing more tutorial content in the future relating to how we actually created uh, all of the vegetation that populated the world. And uh, maybe in the future, um, we'll be able to come back and revisit this landscape. Um, one particular feature I'm very excited uh, to look into more and explore further is the fact that Unreal and Houdini 20 uh, now actually supports, uh, with the Houdini engine, the creation of landscape splines directly inside of Unreal. So this is a really big feature because as uh, some of you might have picked up on, uh, we're not actually creating any sort of sort of dedicated um, road splines or road meshes. We're just changing the uh, modulating the terrain color here, um, but if and, and the materials used, but it would add a whole other layer of believability and detail and interest if we actually had sort of tracks that follow along with you know footprints or cart trails or um, you know you name it, and and also sort of maybe more just detail in general. So landscape splines would allow us to do that. They'd allow us to have a more interactive sort of pipeline dealing with roads and tracks between uh, Houdini and Unreal. Um, so uh, yeah, very, very excited to explore that. And not just for roads and paths, but also for rivers. Um, so plenty of things we can dig into in the future. I previously mentioned the beaches as being another area. And so very excited. And if there's things in particular that you would like to see added to Pegasus Island, uh, then please uh, share your thoughts in the comments. Um, it's been a real pleasure uh, going through and uh, just having the opportunity to work on Project Pegasus. And it's been a real pleasure uh, going through this uh, tutorial series and really getting to sort of look deeply at the workflow that we came up with and sort of try and find ways to uh, expand upon and improve it and tidy it all up. So, um, yeah, thanks a lot for watching and uh, good luck. <laughs>